Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So today we're gonna to be talking all things slippage, what it is, how it impacts options traders, and more importantly, we're gonna be walking through some back-tested option strategies that include slippage so that we can see what the impact of slippage is on a strategy's performance. So first of all, like we said at the beginning, what is slippage? How does it impact traders? Well, the very easiest way to describe slippage, I think, is just the difference between the price you expect to pay or get for a trade and then the actual price that you get. So that's the slippage where you just kind of slip a little bit in price. Now, it generally happens in markets with lower liquidity and wide bid ask spreads. And I'm going to show you how you can kind of filter that out and see what the expected slippage is for different tickers here in a second. But the idea with slippage and knowing about it and why it impacts your trades is because if you don't factor in slippage in your trading costs, it will affect the profitability of a strategy. And I think that it's sometimes this unseen drag on your results. Sometimes traders come in and they back test a strategy or they trade something in paper trading. And what ultimately ends up happening is that paper trading and live markets don't always match up one to one. And what they're usually not accounting for is slippage or widespreads and liquidity. So I wanna make sure that we get that taken care of for you guys today. So let me give you an example here that actually, just so you can see how slippage might impact you and just a, a kind of a real example from today. So earlier this morning, I had a bot that opened an iron condor position and you can see this iron condor position that got opened in XRT, nice looking position, good profit, et cetera, et cetera. If we go down here to the trades, we can actually see the actual trade logs that show all of the progression of the trades that happened using smart pricing. Now we know that the spread was generally wide and that's okay because we were trading this as an EV trade and we wanted to work through that and you could see that it tried multiple prices and it eventually got filled at 172. But what happens is that a lot of people, if they start trading, especially if they paper trade or they don't even test this to begin with, they're not testing their strategies to allow for more slippage and still be profitable. Instead, what they're doing is they're assuming that they'll always get something around kind of the mid price or in the mid price range, which in this case would have been 175. But here you can see that I did allow for a little bit of slippage. I programmed this essentially into my bot. I allowed for the bot to go through a normal smart pricing with a couple cents of slippage. I didn't allow it to go insanely wide. I didn't allow it to go all the way up to the 193. But you can see that I did allow it to have a little bit of slippage so that it could fill the trade. And that's okay. That's part of my trading strategy for these particular types of bots where I allow a little bit of slippage because it still should be okay in the end. But that's actually what happens with slippage. Now it could have filled, and sometimes it does, it fills closer or it fills a little bit further or mid, sometimes it fills a little bit further out. But that's what slippage is. It kind of like seeing it right there, that's how it happens in the market. And slippage is not necessarily a terrible thing as long as you account for it and know that it's happening. So here's something you can do inside of Option Alpha is you can actually use our screener to go through and look for high liquidity tickers that you can trade. And you can actually see the slippage that has happened over the last 12 or so months for different tickers. So if you just go into the screener here, if you're brand new, you can actually filter immediately by liquidity. So we have a little liquidity filter here and you can just filter all things by liquidity. You can then say ETFs or use particular symbols. But if you use this, you can see different tickers have different liquidity. So if I open up, for example, SPY here, and I just check the stats, the liquidity ranking here, of course, for SPY is really high. So it's our number two ranked ticker inside the platform. The average bid ask spread is about five cents. And the average slippage that you might incur with a SPY strategy is about two cents. So this is really important because that, again, gives you some context as to how much you're going to potentially lose in slippage in and out of trades. This is important as you start to back test strategies or start to build your strategies, just so you make sure you account for that potential slippage. All right, now other tickers might not be as amazing as SPY, of course, but again, you can just check it inside of here. So let's go to something that has a little bit lower liquidity. Let's do like Aflac. I don't know, I'm just picking out something that probably has lower liquidity. Yeah, you can see here Aflac is ranked number 193. The average bid ask spread, massive at 41 cents. So the average slippage we've seen is about seven cents. Again, that may not seem like a lot, but on an option trade where you're losing $7 kind of in and out of a trade, just potentially on slippage, maybe even worse 
um, it can really impact your strategy moving forward. So how do we account for this moving forward? Well, what we can do is we can actually backtest strategies and include slippage in them. So with our zero DTE back tester, this is the best way to do it. It's a very clear example of how you can do it. This is an SPY long call spread that I back test, which is actually a profitable strategy. It just re-ran this back test this morning. You can see it is a profitable strategy right now. Um, and just whatever the description is and the details of the back test really don't matter at this point. But what matters here is that if you can see down here in the entry criteria and the position details here and the exit criteria, I don't have any slippage inside of this back test. In fact, if you go to edit this back test here, you can open this up and you can see I do not have or include any slippage inside of this right here. So rather than testing it with slippage, I've chosen in this case, as this example shows, to test it without slippage. Now you can test slippage on the way in and you can test slippage on the way out inside of the platform, which is really cool because it can really allow you to stress test your strategies just to make sure, hey, look, if I'm gonna trade this, does this strategy hold up if there's a significant amount of slippage in the market or if I need to get in and out of trades a little bit different? So what we can actually do to test this is we can go up here to compare and I'm gonna add a new variation of this strategy just so you can visually see the difference here because it's actually pretty crazy. So I'm gonna add a new variation which loads the exact same strategy up with all the criteria. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include five cents of slippage for opening the trade. And this is SPX, which is still pretty liquid, but you can still include five cents of slippage on the open. And then for the close, I'm also gonna include five cents of slippage on closing trades as well. So that's slippage on the way in and on the way out. Now, that doesn't mean it's always gonna happen if you trade it this way. You might get perfectly mid price or you might have to slip a little bit to get the trade filled. But including slippage really is important because again, it allows you to stress test your strategies to make sure that they can withstand a little bit of fluctuation in and out of the trading, uh, like the market. If the markets are moving fast or if there's a lot of volatility, you wanna make sure that you're including strategies that can you know, basically stress test themselves and, and take care of that. All right, so we let the back test finish running. And as you can see, the results are pretty dramatic. If we include slippage, what looks like a profitable strategy, and I would say is a profitable strategy if you can get perfect pricing every time on entry, which almost seems like an impossible thing to do. But if you include some slippage here, you can see that this strategy absolutely craters and crushes itself and then basically just explodes on itself and, and becomes a zero strategy, right? So not a profitable strategy if you include a little bit of slippage, which I would dare to say means that this strategy doesn't really pass the stress test of slippage and liquidity that you would really need to be comfortable with the strategy moving forward. This, by the way, would probably be one of the quintessential examples of traders who would say, sometimes we see this often with newbie traders, is I did this strategy and I paper traded it and it was really good, or I researched it and it was really good, but then I turned it on live and it completely fell apart. This would be potentially one of the reasons why, is because you're not really accounting for real market liquidity, real market fills, and this is one of the ways you can do it is by testing with slippage. So I'll put a link to this inside of the description here right below the video so you can take a look at it, test your own variation as well. Moving forward, you just click on that link and see a copy of this back test. So let's test another one just so we can show you an example of one that potentially does pass this stress test for, um, for slippage. So this is a different strategy. Again, it doesn't matter what it is, just a different strategy that actually does pretty well, seems to do pretty well, just like the other one. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna create a new variation to stress test the exit in and out with slippage. Now you can see the original test here did not include slippage. So we're gonna go ahead and include the same five cents of slippage on order entry and we're gonna do the same five cents of slippage on the exit. Now this one was running all the way to expiration, so it was letting it expire, but you could still take that expiration and include some slippage in there if you wanted to. And we're just gonna go ahead and run that back test. Once that back test is done, then we can see, okay, did this strategy, once we include some slippage in and on the way out, did it kind of pass the stress test, if you will, so that we can maybe go to the next step or start to include it more in our trading moving forward.
Okay, so that test is done running. And as you can see here, it did impact the performance of the strategy pretty dramatically, of course, that performance gets amplified as you go through time. And that just makes logical sense. As you continue to trade a strategy more and more, this impact of slippage isn't really seen in the early days. So in the early kind of period of a strategy, you don't feel like it's impacting you a lot. Maybe you see it a couple of times, but Again, it's kind of that unseen drag that you just don't know is there, but actually impacts you moving forward. And then that performance impact gets amplified as you go out over time. But you can see for this particular strategy, it didn't crush the strategy. It didn't turn it from a winner to a loser. So it seems like it's you know more battle tested, more ready for market fills and real market dynamics and liquidity because you were testing that, that slippage on the way in and on the way out. So this doesn't mean that you should potentially trade this exact strategy or different strategies. Again, I'll include a link here to these back tests so you can play around with it yourself in the description right below the video. One thing you can do once you're ready to go and what's kind of cool about testing it this way is if you have a strategy that you want to run, you can now just go here and say, I want to create a bot from this particular back test. So what that does is it takes all the information for that bot, exactly how it was set up, how it's finding trades, how it's entering and managing trades, and it basically auto-generates the bot for you. But what I think is super cool is that you can now include the trade pricing down here below. And by default, if you test with slippage, it will include slippage from the mid price as the allowance, the tolerance for your strategy moving forward. So we tested five cents from the mid price, five cents from the mid price of slippage, this means that it will allow the bot to go up to five cents because that's what we tested for slippage, both on opening trades and closing trades. And that automatically gets generated inside of the bot for you so you don't have to worry about it, but also so that you can know that whatever you tested is gonna be directly applied to that automated strategy that you're trading. So I hope this video was really helpful to go through not only what slippage is, kind of show you some examples of it, how you can screen for slippage and liquidity, but also the impact that it has on different trading strategies, because it is really important that you understand what slippage is and that you account for that as you're doing your research and back testing. As always, if you have any questions, let us know. Until next time, happy trading.